In this video, I'm gonna show you how to master your music for Spotify so that it goes from this to this. All using Logic Stock Pro plugins. Hey there, my name is Maddie, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take your production skills up a notch by teaching you how to master for Spotify. First, I'll explain a little bit about mastering and the mastering guidelines that Spotify uses. Then I'll show you how to create a plugin chain that will master your track only using stock Logic plugins. After that, I'll show you a mastering change that a professional engineer might use and one that I personally use. And finally, I'll share my secret sauce plugin that gets me better masters every time. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced producer, make sure you watch this till the end. So what is mastering? Mastering is the process of taking a finished mix and making it sound polished on all playback systems. When done correctly, mastering can make the difference between an average sounding record and one that stands out from the crowd. Mastering over the years has actually changed dramatically, all due to the rise of music streaming, and more specifically, Spotify. Spotify changes the loudness levels of the songs you upload so that it matches the rest of their music catalog. This sounds bad, but it's a good thing. Because Spotify changes the volume of our tracks, if we don't follow the guidelines that they give us, they're going to add color to our sound. Most of the time, this is a subtle change, but we really don't want Spotify messing around with our music that we've worked so hard on. Let's take a look at what Spotify expects from its uploads. Spotify says, we use loudness normalization to balance soft and loud songs, creating a more balanced, uniform experience. They also say, we adjust tracks to negative 14 dB LUFS, or loudness units full scale. That means if your track isn't loud, Spotify will turn it up to meet these standards. That also means if it's too loud, it will turn it down to meet these same standards. This can be a problem. We don't want Spotify changing the sound that we've already worked so hard to achieve. But now let me show you how to get to negative 14 LUFS in your song so that it won't be colored by the Spotify algorithm. First, I'll show you how to master your track to negative 14 LUFS only using stock Logic Pro plugins. Then after, I'll show a professional mastering chain. And then after, stick around for that secret sauce plugin that I know you're gonna like. So let's take a look at the mix and see where we are. The song I'm working on today is called Thunder and it's my latest release. You can find out more about it in the description below. The first thing I wanna check in the mix is the stereo output. I wanna make sure that I have enough headroom so that we can add some volume and have room for other effects. I'm looking to hit about negative 10 dBs on the stereo output, which is right here. I'm about negative eight, negative 10. I'm about right in the right spot where I wanna be. If your track is significantly louder than negative 10 dB on the stereo out, Go back to the mix and turn down individual instruments as a whole to bring that number down. Let's start adding some plugins to our master chain. Keep in mind, because we're affecting all of the soundscape with this, we want to keep our changes really subtle. The first plugin I would add is the stock Logic multiband compressor called the Multipressor. A multiband compressor compresses different frequencies of the sound spectrum at different rates, so you can really hone in the sound that you're looking for. Let's start with the mastering preset, which you can find here. I'm gonna click Final Pop Compressor. Now I'm gonna adjust these thresholds till I'm getting some gain reduction. You can hear that here, and you can see it with that. These ratios are really, really subtle. We don't wanna add a lot. Always turn on and off your plugins as you work to make sure that they're actually doing something and to make sure that you're going in the right direction. Now that I've done multiband compression, I might wanna change the frequency spectrum slightly with some EQ. I'm really a big fan of the vintage EQ series that Logic has released recently, and I'm gonna use that. We're gonna to go to Logic, EQ, Vintage EQ Collection, and Vintage Tube EQ. This is an emulation of a classic Pultec tube EQ. Once again, I'm gonna find a mastering preset here to save me most of the work, and then I'm gonna adjust the parameters from there. Mix bus, master shine is what I've decided with. Now I'm gonna throw on some overall track compression and use a technique called parallel compression so that before it hits the limiter later, we can actually get some more volume out of it. Let's see here. We'll go into compressor. We're going to use the Studio, the Studio VCA. Actually, let's go here. We're gonna go to full mix. I like to keep the ratio really, really low, maybe 1.2, maybe 1.1. I'm gonna keep the attack time really slow and the release time 
really fast. Let's see her, what we're getting here. Okay, a key part of parallel compression is this mix knob right here. We're gonna start at 0% and then until we hear some really subtle compression, some slight glue, I'll leave it there. You can also do the opposite technique where you start fully 100% engaged and then go back from there. Really subtle stuff here. Now let's add an EQ to give some overall shaping of the sound. I'm looking for wide bands with really, really minimal gain reduction or gain add, if any. I'm talking really low Q value and really low actual gain reduction, maybe like 0.5 at the most. And finally, the most important plugin that I'm going to use, this is going to get us to negative 14 LUFS, and it uses two stock Logic plugins, the limiter and the volume meter. So let's get those up right now. We'll go to Logic, Dynamics, Limiter, and then we'll go Logic, Metering, Loudness Meter. We'll pull both of these up at the same time so we can see exactly what we are getting. This will tell us our LUFS. These three columns stand for momentary, short-term, and integrated listening levels, which give a better picture of what we actually hear when we're listening. To get to Spotify standards, I'm gonna set my output level to negative one dB, and then I'm gonna adjust the gain until I'm getting the exact number of output I want. When I click start, I'm looking for this integrated to be around negative four. Perfect, that's about right. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit of gain reduction, about 1.7 dBs, which is gonna be just fine. No distortion's gonna happen there. And we're about at negative 14 for our integrated, which is exactly what we're looking for. And that's exactly what the LUFS is gonna be for Spotify. And here's the final result. I will turn all the plugins off, and then I'll turn all the plugins on, and you can hear the difference with Logic Stock Plugins. Off. On. Great, I showed you how to master for Spotify using Logic Stock plugins only, a professional mastering chain that I personally use for some of my clients. Here's a mastering chain that I would use on an actual client's mix. I'm starting off with the Fab Filter Pro MB. I'm then going into the SSL Master Bus Compressor from Waves. I'm using then the Puig Tech emulation of the Pultec, very similar to the Logic one, again from Waves. Then I have Isotopes Ozone 9 to give some EQ to give another dynamic EQ, similar to the multiband compressor from before, and then do some imaging for the stereo spectrum. Then I have a plugin called Vitamin by Waves. And finally, I have my limiter. So let's hear what all of these are doing together to give the result we have. Cool, I think it sounds a lot better, a lot more clear, wider, more punchy, more low end. There's a lot of things that are happening there. And granted that the, it is difference in volume, so it might be hard for you guys to hear over your speakers, especially if you're listening on an iPhone or computer, but believe me, these changes are working. Okay, I've shown you two different mastering chains, one with stock Logic plugins and one that I personally use as a professional. Now it's time to show you my secret sauce for mastering. My secret sauce is Isotopes Ozone 10. It is an all-in-one mastering plugin. It can give you fantastic sounding results with just clicks. I used Ozone 9 in this last example, but Ozone 10 takes it up to another level. Let me show you what it's capable of just analyzing my song and no other plugins. Oh, 
My favorite parts of this plugin are the dynamic EQ that finds problem frequencies and ducks them as need be, the stereo spread tool that can make your mix wider according to different parts of the frequency spectrum, and a limiter that is automatically set for negative 14 LUFS and an output of minus one, exactly what Spotify is looking for. Very cool. It's not perfect. Sometimes I see very drastic EQ curves and sometimes the algorithm doesn't detect what genre I'm actually working in, but it's a great starting point for a lot of masters. And if you're a beginner, then I can't recommend this plugin enough. I personally use it in conjunction with some of the paid plugins that I mentioned in my previous mastering chain, but it always gives me really good results. If you're interested in any of those plugins or if you're interested in Ozone 10, you can find them in the description below. Mastering is complicated, but starting with Logic stock plugins is a great way to get familiar with the tools and get familiar with the DAW as you get your feet underneath you. If you want to take your masters one step further, then consider investing in some more advanced plugins like Ozone 10. If you have any questions about the information I just gave, leave it in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.